Hey, what's up? So if you're here, you probably heard of Raspberry Pi and RetroPie, but aren't sure where to get started. Don't worry, I got you covered. So you've probably seen those tabletop arcade units floating around the internet and thought, man, that looks difficult to set up. But really, it's not that hard. After this guide, you'll have the core knowledge you need to take it to that next level. You'll know exactly how to install RetroPie on one of these bad boys. All right, step one, gathering your materials. So first thing you're gonna need is a keyboard for the setup process. You're gonna need a micro to full-size HDMI cable. You're gonna need a power adapter for your Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi, of course, a micro SD and a micro SD adapter to full-size SD if your computer needs one, and the USB controller you're gonna be using to play your games with. Okay, now that we've got all our materials set in place, let's go on to step two, setting up your micro SD card. All right, I've got my micro SD, I've got my micro SD adapter, so I can go ahead and plug it into my laptop. So first up, let's go and get our Raspberry Pi imager. Raspberry Pi has its own imager on their website that you can just download. I'm going over there now, just doing a search for Raspberry Pi imager. And this will take me over to the official Raspberry Pi website where I will download the imager. All it is is just software to make your machine boot from a storage device that has an operating system on it. Now, let's head over to the RetroPi site. This is where we'll be downloading the operating system that we'll be installing on our micro SD using our Raspberry Pi imager that we downloaded in the previous step. Okay, now that that's done downloading, we can head over to our Raspberry Pi imager that we downloaded previously, and we can now track down our operating system RetroPi that we just downloaded. Now, we just gotta pick our storage device. As we already inserted our micro SD, we'll go ahead and find it for our storage device. Now, we just simply write, and the Raspberry Pi imager does all the rest of the work. Once that's complete, we can eject our micro SD, get our micro SD out of the adapter, and back into our Raspberry Pi. Now, let's boot it up and see if everything went smoothly. All right, step three, let's get RetroPi set up. I'm gonna power the unit on. OS looks like it's loading. You can kind of look at this and monitor and kind of see what it's doing during boot. If you get any failures, it does a good job at telling you what failed exactly. So it looks like everything was successful. And we've got our welcome screen. All right, since we have our controller set up, it's asking us to select and hold our A button that we'll be using. And now let's configure our controller. All right, so this is pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna be pressing the buttons that it requests on the screen. So for D-pad up, I'm gonna go up, down, left, right. We've got start, select, A button, B button, X button, Y button, left shoulder, right shoulder, and now we've mapped our SNES style controller. There will be other buttons to map, but for this controller, we won't be using them. So to continue past the buttons we're not gonna be using, we just press and hold any button. Press and hold, press and hold, press and hold. If you wanna learn about adding ROMs, overclocking, optimal settings for consoles like Dreamcast, PS1, go ahead and like and subscribe and I'll make those videos. Until then, see you next time. Peace.